Chair, if you just introduce yourself for the record and welcome to the committee. Sure. Thank you, uh, Chairman Harshman and members of the committee. Um, I'm Josh Fair, um, resident of Casper, Wyoming, since June of last year. Um, I'm also the CEO of Scottsdale Mint. Uh, we are a manufacturer um, and of, of precious metals products. Um, we're in our 15th year. We, we do the minting of legal tender uh, bullion, um, which could be uh, anything from um, bars to coins for over 22 foreign governments and central banks around the world. So later this year um, in Casper, uh, our new facility will be producing um, legal tender for other, current, other, other countries uh, made of pure gold and pure silver. Um, we also produce for large, some of the largest banks in North America, where you produce physical product, deliver it to their vaults, um, and uh, perhaps in the short future, some of these banks will choose to store in Wyoming, and our, our facility will be a distribution hub of, of out to their banks and to their customers, uh, but also uh, inbound as well. Um, we, I'm in favor of the bill, and I'm not here so much to say what, why buy gold or when to buy gold, but I'd really like to talk to everyone about the trends of what we're seeing, and, and then also why, why is my company now in Wyoming? And um, what we're seeing is last year, the World Gold Council said was the largest increase in central bank buying of gold since 1950. And that was back when there still was some uh, backing physically to the US dollar with, with gold that's since been removed. We're also seeing a trend of large institutions buying physical product. I know someone mentioned uh, electronically traded fund. They're getting out of those uh, bank um, products because they have derivatives. And if you read the prospectus, it's not very clear. I'll mention two um, publicly traded companies. One is Tesla, Elon Musk's company, um, just roughly 18 months ago, amended their SEC filings to, to have gold bullion on its balance sheets. Another company is Peter Thiel's um, big data company, which is the largest AI company, Palantir Technologies, based out of Denver. I think their market caps are around 19 billion. Um, they did the same thing just over a year ago and actually put, they actually purchased physical gold bars and put it in a private vault in the United States. So these are the trends that people are doing. They're getting away from the bank derivative products and they're actually going to physical possession uh, and, and stored. This, this trend is growing um, so fast that when COVID hit, um, obviously a lot of distrust happened throughout the world. My company never shut down. And when governments, governments are the largest producers of gold and silver, uh, precious metals, coins, and even bars in the world. My company represents, we're one of the top in the world. And a lot of the governments are now turning to a U.S. company to make their products for them, for, for their citizens in their country and around the world. And one of the reasons I chose Casper and, and the state of Wyoming, uh, there was a myriad of reasons. Um, I took a step back, looked at special economic zones around the world, and, and, and in, even looked within Arizona as well, which is where we have two facilities and, and uh, down, down there currently. Um, one of the big drivers was this legal tender bill. I would not be here today had that not been passed a few years ago. Um, not only that bill, but Wyoming's ranked number one in sound money. And a lot of people don't realize what that ranking means, but if you're a business owner and you're trying to find out a good place for your company to headquarter or to operate out for the next decade plus, you need to consider your local community and your state. Um, what's that environment going to be like in the future? And Wyoming is the strongest in the entire union. And I view this bill as a really incredible message to, the, to not just the United States, but the world to say that we are open for business. We're going to be a wonderful place to operate for manufacturing to be here, for, for people to be in a, a really strong environment. That sound money ranking, um, you know, South Dakota's up there, Texas is up there. Um, I, those, are the, those are the major states I was looking at, including Florida and Wyoming won out, and, and in, in addition to a lot of other uh, great reasons. And um, so that's, that's kind of a, a, a broad brush. Again, I'm not saying uh, that Wyoming needs to buy gold, that's up for other people to decide. Um, but I'm just showing you the trends of what we're seeing since COVID, and it's not stopping. It's, it's going to uh, dramatically um, uh, change. Our, we purchased the Star Tribune building, and I was up here more than two years ago. So this has been a long, long time coming. 
Um, by the time we actually closed on the facility and the Tribune moved out, we're about a little over a year into construction. Uh, we've got another year and a half to two years left, um, but we are building what would be essentially a private Fort Knox. Uh, that building is high density concrete. Uh, and while it didn't fit the bill for a lot of other companies, it was perfect for us. Uh, we are going to be a foreign trade uh, zone operator uh, where essentially we're going to be a, a free port operator for imports and exports for, for mining companies all around the world. Um, we're going to be doing very similar, um, very similar things to some of the conversations that have been discussed. We understand metals. That's what we do. We work with the banks. We work with governments. About half of our product goes overseas. And I am more than willing to help answer questions today um, or, or uh, you know, off, off, uh, off time as well. So that's kind of my quick, my quick overview here. Appreciate you. Appreciate. I just, you know, at some point, not to get off this bill, but we're going to have a revenue interim meeting in Casper. Would it, and maybe we get with you, it'd be possible to take a, you know, a little tour of your place. Would that be possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And that's in the Star Tribune building. It is. It is. It looks like a JC Penney's on the outside still, but on the inside, it's it's changing quite a bit. Okay. How many folks you got working there? That I mean, not that you need to tell us, but I mean, how 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 big a project? I mean, building one. Yeah, we've been averaging uh, the last number of months between thirty to forty uh, trades on site, developing the facility out. Uh, we have our first vault installed. Um, we're we've got some of the top security consulting. Uh, to, to build this facility out to what we believe will be well into the billions of dollars of insurable, uh, assur insurable facility. The reason I'm doing it, I had no idea Wyoming was interested in something even like this. This was really built for my customers and governments around the world. Uh, kind of like Field of Dreams, you build it and they will come. You see, you see the foresight, you get ahead of the curve. And I've got a lot of information about how does metals get authenticated. I hadn't really thought of uh, some of the things, but I have some answers of some ideas of how we work with custom companies and customers. When metal comes into us, um, we we first authenticate it. So if someone wants to send in what they believe is a million dollars, it's sent into our facility. We're testing it for weight and purity. And then we we go back to them and says, this is how many ounces you have. When would you like to lock the price? A lot of times people work off of what's called a fix, a future price. So we say, we'd like to sell that on tomorrow's fix, which gives the option for the buyer of the metal to either hedge it or uh, like I told you a lot of these, these, these companies like Palantir, um, they're not hedging their gold. They're putting it on their balance sheets. Central banks have gold on their balance sheets and they do not want to hedge it to the US dollar. They want it something different. And so this just provides, it provides the optionality for those that are looking. Uh, I'm a risk management major. That's, that's what I've done. Um, that's what I do. I manage and trade. I have to manage my own company's uh, books along with my team. And this is this is a fundamental um, um, really program that's being done around the world. But people are looking at other assets, just like you can own the dollar, you can own the euro, the yen, the peso, whatever you want. Gold is the only other asset really that people are adding right now around the world to diversify on their actual balance sheet. So I think in a few years, we're going to look back and say that Wyoming had the option uh, of, of, of getting out in front. And I think the impact from an economic impact for this state is dramatic. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being here today and driving down. That's why. Okay. Questions? Uh, Representative Oakley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just, just briefly, um, so, so I'm assuming that Fort Knox wasn't cheap, <laughs> um, you know, for security measure storage. All of that was an ex is an expensive proposition to build the infrastructure. Go ahead yeah, through the chair. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, thankfully, I'm, I'm a, a private company, and uh, we, like I said, we have two facilities. We've already built out facilities similar to this. This is just done on a, on a slightly different scale for our needs. Um, I started the company in my guest bedroom um, in, in 2008. I came from the mining industry. I did mining finance. Um, I, I handled uh, corporate risk management, some of the biggest copper, gold, and silver miners in the world, publicly traded companies, worked with the CFOs, uh, and saw the need for this type of uh, product to, be, to, to enter the market. And, and today, our brand is, is well-recognized uh, around the world to the point where uh, foreign governments and banks allow us to trust us to put weight and purity on there, and we guarantee every single product. So if product comes in and we say it's genuine, that's on my company to do it when, when all we have is our reputation and 15 years and billions of dollars in transactions. Um, that's, that's what we go off of. Yeah. Okay. 
Any other questions? Go ahead, Representative Bear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fair, um, you, you've heard conversation here about uh, this bill allowing the, the treasurer to contract with outside services for verifying the purity of the, of the asset. Uh, is this something that you foresee your company being able to do out of Casper for the state of Wyoming? And you mentioned Fort Knox. Uh, I assume you're able to store the product that you're working with at the time, but is your intention to be able to store large volumes for entities, for instance, like the state? Fair. Excellent. Excellent question. Yes, we do this every day. So whether it's, we, we work with almost every, I'm not saying every bullying dealer, but I'd say the vast majority of every bullying dealer in the world. So we're, we're actually bringing them material, we're manufacturing material, shipping it to them. Logistically, we're shipping out thousands of packages a week. We're going post office, FedEx, UPS, common carrier freight, and Brinks Armored Trucks, Loomis, Garda. We work with all those services to be able to bring it in. Um, and to your, to your point, really, this would not be a burden on the state necessarily. Uh, the way, the way, way we, when we operate for, let's say, we're working for a third party bank, or we're working for, for another bullying dealer, the metal that comes into us is that that transportation cost is the burden is from the consumer that's sending it in. Once the product comes into our facility, it's validated. Um, and, and then the ounces are, are, are deemed, um, you know, true. And that's the way that way there's no slippage in, in time. Metal is typically purchased to give you guys an idea. Um, if the state were to buy silver on the open market, it's not what you see online. We're not buying coins with huge margins. We're talking less than a quarter percent type markup at an institutional level. Um, for a purchase price, it's typically very, it's pretty darn close to spot where there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no fee. It's pretty much flat. My company's buying raw material. I pay essentially spot plus a tiny, a tiny premium to bring that raw material into either Scottsdale or Casper uh, to then work with it. So if the material was coming in, we'd be able to validate it. Uh, and, and that same day, and then the state could decide, do they want to liquidate it with 24, 48 hour settlement, or they can put it on their balance sheet. It could go into their own cage vault within our facility uh, that they have the lock and key of, and that those ounces actually go in, into the state to be, to be either held or sold at a later date. Okay, very good. Any other questions? Again, we appreciate, I know, uh, been down here for a few days with the snowstorm, so we appreciate you traveling here Absolutely. to testify. So, okay, and you'll be available if we have further questions. Absolutely. I'm going to 